Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video in our web development series. So in this video, we're actually going to set up our integrated development environment, or as most people would call it, an IDE. And we're going to be using something called Visual Studio Code. So let's just jump right in and go ahead and do that. If you pull up your web browser, and if you just Google Visual Studio Code Download, this is going to pop up. And I'll just mention here, we want Visual Studio Code. There's another piece of software called Visual Studio that we that's not what we're looking for. We want specifically Visual Studio Code. So click on that one and then find whatever operating system you have. In my case, I have Windows 11 64-bit. So we're going to go ahead and download that. And it's going to go ahead and pop up down here. And as soon as that's done downloading, um, all we have to do is run that executable. So it should be pretty simple. Pull up your downloads, run that executable, and then accept the license agreement. Click Next. Next, we can pretty much do defaults on all of these. Um, I want to start my new folder, so I'm going to leave that um, unchecked. And then in here, um, this default directory is fine. So Visual Studio Code. And now here, I'm going to go ahead and make a desktop icon. You don't have to do that. Um, but I would definitely recommend these other two options here where it's add open with code to Windows Explorer and then add open with code to the directory context menu. And I'll show you why later, but I would go ahead and select both of those options and hit next on that. And then let's go ahead and install that. Okay, and there we go. Um, we can go ahead and launch that, click finish. And now we should have this empty Visual Studio code open here. And with that open, there's just a few things I'll point out in here. This is a pretty simple layout. You've got your basic file and edit menu up here. And in here, file, uh, preferences, and then settings. This is going to be where you can find any settings that you need for VS Code. This icon right here is going to be your explorer. So if I click on that, this is going to be our file explorer, but we don't have anything open. So what we could do is we could clone a repository from a version control system, and we'll get to that later. We could open a folder with this button, um, or we could do, if you selected those extra options I told you to when we installed it, if I make a new folder in here, let's just call it demo. If I right click on that and come down here to show more options, you should have an open with code option in there. If you don't see that open with code option, that means you probably didn't select those two checkboxes I told you to during the installation, and you need to go back and do that. Um, but regardless, we actually don't need that. That's just nice to have. What you can do is you can actually just take this directory and drag and drop it into Visual Studio, and now that directory is open. Of course, if we look in here, this is just an empty directory because I just made that for a demo purpose. So there's nothing in there, but I've got a couple different buttons up here. I can do a new file. I can do a new directory, um, or I can just right click in here and make a new file. So if I make an index.html, well, now we have an HTML file. And if I make another new file and call it maybe style.css, now I have a CSS file. And now one more file, we'll call it scripts.js. Um, so basically, these are the three different languages that we're going to need to be learning in kind of the beginning part of this course, which is going to be HTML, which is kind of going to be um, what puts all of the structure onto your web page. And I've heard people kind of um, call this more or less the skeleton or the bones of your web website. And then we need to learn CSS, which is going to be kind of what adds the style and the look and the feel and makes your website much more um, user friendly and enjoyable to look at. And then the JavaScript, which is going to be basically all of the coding logic and any script that needs to run in the background. So I've got those three files here. And that's pretty much it for the file explorer. We can also you have a search here, you've got this run and uh, actually, you've got the source control section here, and you can initialize a repository. You can publish it up to GitHub, um, which is what we're going to be using later, but we won't worry about that until we get to the GitHub introduction. And then beyond that, you've got your run and debug section for if you ever need to debug your JavaScript code and walk through it line by line. And then finally, you've got your extensions here. And we're actually going to need to install some extensions. And think of an extension 
um, just really like an add-on that we can run inside of VS Code. So kind of like you have a phone and maybe you have an Android phone and that comes with your Android operating system. Well, then you can install any additional apps on top of that. So an extension is kind of like an app for VS Code. So there's a couple that we're gonna to wanna to get in here. The first one is one called Live Server. Um, so right here, go ahead and install that. And once that's installed, we should be able to come back to our file explorer, come into index.html. If you just type the exclamation mark, this will pop up with your emit abbreviation and it's gonna give you a basic HTML structure. Hit enter on that. And now that we have that, let's just type something, test for demo. Go ahead and save that file, which you can do either file, save, or you can hit control S. Um, so if I make a change here, you'll see up at the top of this file, this is a dot. But if I save that, that dot is now an X. So anytime you have a dot at the top of your file, that means something saved. Or maybe if you have changes in other files and you're in here, um, if you just click file, there's a save all option. So you can save every file that you have open. But anyway, let's go ahead and save this file. And now if we right click on that and do open with live server, And that should pull up a web page for you like this. And you can see I've got tests for demo here and then test for demo here. So if I make any changes to this, maybe just add a number and then save that, you should see that number pops up here as well. So that's what this live server is going to allow us to do. Um, basically see any changes that we make live as we make them. So back to the extensions, there's a few more that we're going to want here. Uh, we have live server, then I'm going to add, you don't have to do this one, but I just like it. So one dark pro. And basically, this is just going to give me a different color scheme on my application itself. You see it just changed to a new color scheme. Um, I just think that's a little easier on my eyes, but you don't need that if you don't want that. And then I'm going to add material theme icon material icon theme. This um, this top one here by Philip Keefe. And if you look here really quick, you can see index.html is that little orange logo, and then JavaScript is JS, and then the CSS is that little hashtag symbol. Now, if I come down here and install my material icon theme, and once that, in, once that is installed, let's click set file icon theme, come back here, you can see now I've got the modern looking logos for HTML, JavaScript, and then CSS. So that's what I'm going to be using in class. Again, this is just for kind of the look and feel of your project. But if you want your project to look like mine as you're watching me do things and as you're walking through code with me, then I would recommend installing that. And then coming back to the extensions, I'm going to add one called auto, clo auto close tag. And this is just going to help us write HTML, uh, HTML code a little bit easier. So we're going to install that one. We're going to install auto rename tag. So let's go ahead and install that. And just to show you really quick what that is doing, um, let's say I have a tag in here. We'll just call it um, div. So you see I type div and hit enter, and it automatically closes that after I create it. So that's that auto close tag. And then auto rename tag, if I rename this first one from div to header, you can see it renames the closer too. Um, so that way we don't have to type everything twice and it keeps things consistent for us. And then coming back into here, we've got that auto close tag, we've got auto rename tag, I'm gonna do one called Babel um, JavaScript. This top one here. And then after, Babel Java, JavaScript is installed. I'm going to do one called IntelliCode. And then IntelliCode API usage extension. And basically, this IntelliCode is simply going to, it's AI assisted stuff from Microsoft that's going to predict kind of like when you're typing on your phone and it predicts what you're going to type and you can just hit enter to type that out. That's going to do that with your code. And then finally, I'm going to do one called Path IntelliSense. 
Um, and that's going to do the same exact thing just with our file paths and directories. Okay, and that's pretty much it for um, the extensions that we're going to need, at least for now. Um, in this first part of the class, again, we're going to be learning HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript. Once we get into things like um, React JS and Next.js and a bunch of different libraries that we're going to be using, kind of beyond the building blocks of web design, well, then we're going to need some more extensions and we'll come back and install those when we get to that. But for now, that should be good. Now, just a few more things I'll show you about this code editor. Um, let's say that we want to see more than one file at a time. We can actually take these files and drag them, um, and we can see files either one on top of each other, or we can even see files side by side. So I can have files side by side. I can have them on top of each other. Um, I can close this if I need more real estate on my screen. And basically, this can be a really handy feature, especially if you're working with, as you'll see later, um, the CSS code. Um, oftentimes, you want to have your CSS file and then your HTML file open at the same time so that you can see them both. So just know that that's how you do that. And this has been just a fairly basic introduction to VS Code and the installation and then using that. And this is going to be the setup that we move forward with in this class. So if you have any questions about that, definitely leave a comment below. And we will see you in the next video.